Hello, welcome to Dr. Nakamla's lecture series on bridge engineering, number A4. Chapter 5 Design of Steel Members. First, let me explain the allowable stress method. Its principle is stress of the member caused by the design loads should be within the allowable stress which is the yield stress divided by the safety factor about 1.7. This is the conventional method, easy to use, but less rational compared with the limit state design. Then, too, limit state design using partial load factors, which is used in Japan, US, or Europe. This method considers uncertainty and scatter of design loads and resistance strengths and verifies that the member does not reach the required limit states. From now, I will explain this method. 5.1 Load Resistant Performance We classify design loads into three stages to verify the load resistance performance of steel members. 1. The state where permanent loads are dominant, such as self-weight of structures. 2. The state where fluctuating loads are dominant, such as live loads and winds. 3. The state where accidental loads are dominant, such as ultra-strong earthquake or collision. We consider three states of steel members. 1. The state where the load-bearing capacity of a steel member does not lower. 2. The state where the load-bearing capacity of a steel member lowers, but it is local and within anticipation. 3. The state where the load-bearing capacity of a steel member lowers, but it is not completely lost. 5.2. Limit states of steel bridges. Steel bridges are classified into three limit states. Limit state 1. A bridge must be elastic and reversible. Also, no displacements nor vibration to lower the load-bearing capacity are allowed. Limit state 2. Minor damage is allowed, but it should be within the assumed range. This is applied to substructures for the strong earthquakes. For steel superstructures, it is included in limit state 1. Limit state 3. A bridge can be damaged, but no collapse of bridge. 5.3. Verification of steel members. The steel members must satisfy the limit state 1 and 3 with sufficient reliability against the combination of the design loads, which is verified by these equations. The left side is associated with the applied load, and the right side the resistance. The principle is, the applied load must be within the resistance. When equation 5.1 is satisfied, it is judged that the member does not exceed the limit state 1. When equation 5.2 is satisfied, it is judged that the member does not exceed the limit state 3. The left side is response of members, S, in other words, sectional forces calculated by design laws. It includes the load factor gamma Q, considering uncertainties of the design laws, also includes the load combination factor gamma p, considering the probabilities of occurrence of different loads at the same time. The right side is the resistance, Rs and Ru, 
which include the modeling and analysis factor uh, XI1, uh, considering uncertainties associated with bridge modeling and analysis. And the member and the structural factor XI2, considering uncertainties of inelastic properties of members and structures. And the resistance factor Phi RS RU consider uncertainties of materials and members. This table shows the load combination factor gamma P and the load factor gamma Q for different design layers. For permanent load D, gamma P is 1.0 and gamma Q is 1.05. As for D plus L, gamma Q is 1.05 for D and 1.25 for L. This is because the live load is more uncertain than the dead load. 5.3.1 Members with Axial Tension Let me explain how to verify the tensile members. Suppose a steel member is subjected to axial tensions ND and NL. When the tensile stress does not exceed the limit value of equation 5.3, the steel member satisfies limit state 1. When the tensile stress does not exceed the limit value of equation 5.4, the steel member satisfies limit state 3. These are the values of modeling and analysis factor and the resistance factor for limit state 1. As for earthquakes, there are two levels L1 and L2 which have different values. These are modeling and analysis factor member and structure factor, and resistance factor for limit state 3. Exercise 5.1 Verification of a steel member in tension Suppose that a steel box section is subjected to tensile force due to the dead load, ND, and a tensile force due to live load, NL. Verify if the steel member satisfies limit state 1. Note that the yield strength is 235 newton per square millimeters and ND is 800 and NL is 500 kilonewton. B shows the assumed cross section. First, sectional properties of the box section is calculated like this. The box section consists of upper flange, two webs, and lower flange. We only need cross-sectional area. Then the stress is obtained with this equation. On the other hand, the limit value is obtained by this equation. The stress is within the limit value, therefore it satisfies limit state 1. 5.3.2 Members with axial compression Steel members may buckle when they suffer axial compression. Buckling is a highly nonlinear phenomenon associated with out of plane deformation. Therefore, the limit state 3 is verified by equation 5.5. There are two kinds of buckling column buckling and plate buckling, whose effects are included in this equation. When the limit state 3 is satisfied, it is regarded that the limit state 1 is automatically satisfied. In the limit value for axial compression, there are two coefficients, 
rho CRG and rho CRL. Rho CRG is a coefficient for column buckling. Rho CRL is for the coefficient for plate buckling. Equation 5.6 and the figure show rho CRG for a box section which depends on the slenderness parameter. This table shows modeling and analysis factor, member and structure factor, and the resistance factor for limit state 3. Exercise 5.2 Verification of a steel member in compression Suppose that a steel box section is subjected to a compressive force due to dead load ND and a compressive force due to live load NL. Verify if the steel member satisfies limit state 3. Note that the yield strength is 235 newton per square millimeters. ND equal minus 800 and NL equal minus 250 kilonewton. In this case, ignore steel plate buckling. First, sectional properties of the box section is calculated. The box section consists of upper flange and two webs and lower flange. We need cross-sectional area and the moment of inertia. Y is the distance from the neutral axis. Then the stress is obtained with this equation. The limit value is obtained by these equations with slenderness ratio and buckling coefficients. The stress is within the limit value, therefore it satisfies limit state 3. 5.3.3 Members with bending moments when a steel section is subjected to bending moment, there exists both tensile and compressive stresses. The limit state for the tensile side is yield and that for the compressive side is buckling. Therefore, the tensile side is verified for the limit state 1 and the compressive side is verified for the limit state 3. The limit value for the compressive side includes the coefficient for the lateral buckling, rho BRG, which depends on buckling parameter and the distance between the fixed points of adjacent compressive flanges. Exercise 5.3 Verification of a steel member subjected to bending moments. Suppose that a steel I section is subjected to a bending moment due to the dead load MD and a bending moment due to the live load ML. Verify if the steel member satisfies limit state 3. Note that the yield strength is 355 newton per square millimeters, MD equal 6000 and uh, uh, ML equal 2500 kilonewton. The compressor flange is fixed to the concrete slab. First, sectional properties of the I section is calculated. The I section consists of upper flange, web, and lower flange. We need the moment of inertia. Y is the distance from the neutral axis. The stress is obtained with this equation. The I section is symmetrical and the tensile stress at the lower flange and the compressive stress at the upper flange are the same. The equation of the limit value is different for 
the tension and the compression. But in this case, the upper flange is fixed to the slab and does not buckle laterally. Therefore, the value is the same. The stress is within the limit value, therefore it satisfies limit state 3. I explained the design method based on the Japanese code. You use the codes in Europe, America, Asia, or in your own country, which is in principle the same as this lecture. That's all for this lecture. See you next lecture.